Next, we have the polocytes, okay? If I have immune complexes deposited in the polocytes, okay, they're not going to really be susceptible to blood-borne factors. Same with the mesangial cells. If I have immune complexes deposited in the mesangium. However, with the mesangium, if I have something like IgM deposited in the mesangium, okay, the mesangium is going to secrete cytokines, okay? That's really important. Why? Because those cytokines, okay, can cause uh, a type of glomerular sclerosis, right? And they can also change, okay, the, the, the charge in the glomerular basement membrane. So if I have alteration of the charge in the glomerular basement membrane, I'm able to pass proteins through. Ha! Ah, ha! Ah. If I'm able to pass proteins through, I have proteinuria, okay? And I have a nephrotic problem, okay? Any F, any, sorry, not any F, uh, sounds like F. Any P-H-R-O-T-I-C, okay? So if I have an immune problem, if I have release of cytokines from the mesangium that alter the charge of the glomerular basement membrane, I have a nephrotic problem. If I have an inflammatory process, like I said earlier, if I have immune complexes deposited in the endothelium, which destroy the structure of the glomerular basement membrane, okay, those fenestrate, I'm pretty much destroyed. It's like poking a hole in the glomerular basement membrane. It's like a gaping hole for red blood cells to go through. So if I have an inflammatory process, if I have deposition of immune complexes in the endothelium or, or maybe even the glomerular basement membrane, okay, I'm going to have hematuria, hematuria, okay, and this is called nephritic syndrome, N-E-P-H, sounds like an F, N-E-P-H-R-I-T-I-C, okay, so now we have a difference between a nephrotic syndrome and a nephritic syndrome, okay. That is very, very, very important. Okay, so based upon like the locations and the types of injuries, okay, to the glomerulus, we can classify glomerular diseases into really five main categories. Okay, number one, minimal change glomerular nephritis. Okay, this is a nephrotic process. Membranous glomerular nephritis. This is a nephrotic process. Focal segmental glomerular nephritis. This is a nephrotic process, okay? Those first three I just told you, okay, don't worry, I'm going to come back to them and talk about them in more detail, okay? Those first three are nephrotic processes, okay? The last two is our mesangial proliferative glomerular nephritis, okay? This is a nephritic process, and diffuse or focal proliferative member, uh, diffuse or focal proliferative glomerular nephritis, okay? And this is also a nephritic process. So we're going to talk about number one, number one, minimal change glomerular nephritis, okay? Minimal change glomerular nephritis is due to the deposition of immune complexes in the podocytes. Why is this important? It's important because it can alter the change of the slit diaphragms. Remember the slit diaphragms have sialoglycoproteins in them? This can alter the change of those slit diaphragms and allow proteins to slip through. So if you have minimal change glomerular nephritis, you're going to have a proteinuria. This is a nephrotic syndrome, okay? This is important. What's also important is to know is if you have immune complex deposition in the foot processes, they're not going to be very ex accessible by blood-borne factors. So on histology, you're going to have very minimal change, okay? You're going to have some change, but you're going to have very minimal change. But you're also going to have a proteinuria, okay? Second, Number two, the number two nephrotic syndrome, okay, is membranous glomerular nephritis. Membranous glomerular nephritis, similar to minimal change glomerular nephritis, is the immune complex deposition in the glomerular basement membrane, okay? So when you have immune complex deposition in the glomerular basement membrane, you have altered charge of the heparin sulfate proteoglycans, okay, in the glomerular basement membrane, and you have the ability for proteins to pass through, again, proteinuria. Remember, this is different. Sialoglycoproteins in the podocytes, heparin sulfate prote proteoglycan in the glomerular basement membrane, okay? The last of the nephrotic syndromes that we're going to talk about, and again, it's the last because it also causes a little bit of hematuria, is focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. Okay, this is number three. Focal segmental glomerular sclerosis is caused because of a cytokine injury to the podocytes. Okay, 
this is secondary to some type of mesangial cell injury. Remember I said that the mesangial cells secrete cytokines? Okay, well those cytokines are damaging to the podocytes. Okay, and this causes scarring lesions in the podocytes. Again, it's going to ch alter the charge in the slit di diaphragm. It's going to allow proteins to go through. Okay, but this is more damaging than the immune complex deposition because those immune complexes are not susceptible to bloodborne factors. Okay, but the cytokines are independent of that of that access. Right, they're coming from the mesangial cells. Okay, so they're going to be a little bit more destructive, and you're also going to see a hematuria. Okay, and focal segmental glomerulosclerosis kind of serves or represents the final common pathway. Okay, due to a decreased number of nephrons of any cause. Okay, because when you have increased pressure in the glomerulus, right, you're going to start damaging those mesangial cells. They're going to be starting to secrete cytokines. Okay, so if you have decreased nephrons, okay, uh, due to maybe chronic kidney disease or something like that, uh, you're going to cause glomerular hypertension. You're going to cause increased mesangial macromolecule macromolecular trafficking. Okay, and this is going to progress to glomerular sclerosis slash fibrosis. Okay, and it's going to give you this focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. Okay, which is defined by hematuria and proteinuria. Okay, so that those are the three nephrotic syndromes that are very important to remember.